Baby, donde tú quieras, yo paso a buscarte. Tú espérame afuera, pa' si no llamarte. Welcome back to Max Reaction. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing good. I'm doing pretty good myself. Um, we're gonna learn about the Philippines today. 101 facts about the Philippines. And as many of you know, I have a lot of Filipino subscribers. Um, been to the Philippines a few times. I'm married to a Filipina from the Philippines. Uh, we're going to the Philippines in June, so we'll be there in June. So definitely um, subscribe and follow along with our vlogs. We're gonna go see some family, my wife's family and do some fun things, and uh, we'll be there for several weeks. But anyway, um, I know some stuff about the Philippines through my wife, of course, and being there, but there's a lot I don't know. And that's why I like reacting to stuff from the Philippines, because one day, um, my wife and I and my kids want to move to the Philippines to be around, you know, her family. She's came over here, away from her family, so it's only right, you know, later on, I go over there, and spend time around her family. That's just something that I want to do and I want my my children to be around their Filipino family too. Um, I have a little half Filipino boy. Well he's getting big. I keep doing this but you've seen him in some of the the videos. He's getting big. He's uh, 15 months old. But anyway we're gonna learn uh, 101 facts about the Philippines. So I'm, I'm excited. So let's go ahead and check it out. Let's react to it. Let's see what I can learn about the Philippines because I always love to learn about the Philippines. Um, it's just a big part of my life. So let's do this. Greetings, motherfuckers. My name hey. is Sam, and today I, well, I'm not going to be telling you anything as I'm away on a hashtag vacay. Amsterdam, actually, since you asked. Vacay, huh? Amsterdam, am I right? <laughs> or Amsterdam, or Samster Sam. Sorry, off topic here. The point is, I'm not here, but my good pals Chris, Leaf, and Jacob Let's will get to it. down about the fabulous cluster of tropical islands known collectively as the Philippines. The lovely, the known pretty. The world for its stunning beaches, oh, and yeah. wildlife, and near ubiquitous nurses. But why should you be very careful before getting married in the Philippines? Why do the people of Manila despise Claire Danes? Why? And will this video go ultra viral and inspire an all expenses trip funded by the Philippine Department of Tourism? Maybe. <laughs> I hope so. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So, crank up that volume, surround yourself with a varied selection of snacks, and prepare yourself for a non stop Filipino extravaganza. Let's Here's do it! One fact about the Philippines. Take it away, boys. Number one. The Philippines, known officially as the Republic of the Philippines, right. is a unitary sovereign country in Southeast Asia. Boom! Back to one. Not so right the beautiful. To a phenomenal start, guys. We should be proud of ourselves. Yay! Number two. Situated in the Western Pacific Ocean, the Philippines is surrounded by the South China Sea on the west, the Philippine Sea on the east, and the Celebes Sea on the southwest. As Can we say the... East Filipino Sea instead of the China Sea. <laughs> but the Philippines shares maritime borders, meaning borders for water, with China and Taiwan for right. the north, Vietnam to the west, Palau to the east, and Malaysia and Indonesia to the south. south. Number three. According to the National Mapping and Resource Information Authority, the Philippines consists of 7,641 islands. Which frankly is a large amount of islands. And I've been on about seven or eight of the islands, maybe maybe ten islands. Um, and absolutely beauty wherever you go in the Philippines, it is absolutely beautiful. Um, some of the inner city, you know, there's garbage and stuff. That's not so beautiful. But the nature outside the cities, oh, it's just gorgeous. It's just so pretty. Interestingly, only 2,000 of them are inhabited, and nearly 5,000 are still entirely unnamed. Hmm. Unnamed? Let's start naming. <laughs> Number four. I want to eat it. The nation's numerous islands are broadly categorized into three main geopolitical divisions. Luzon in the north, Mindanao in the south, Messiah. and Visayas nestled Visayas. Them in the middle. How can you see? These three areas are further divided into 17 regions, so gorgeous. 145 cities, 1,489 municipalities, and 42,036 barangays. Which are like neighborhoods, I think. Term for a village. Village. Number five. The Philippines has a total land area of 343,448 square kilometers. That's a little smaller than the U.S. state of New Mexico. 
Shout out to all New Mexico fans. Just spread out. Fans. We did a video about you, not New Mexico, all Mexico, but we love you all. Number six. As the Philippines is located both on the Pacific Ring of Fire and fairly close to the equator, Volcanoes. the country is highly prone to powerful earthquakes and typhoons. Volcanoes. On the other significantly less scary hand, the position of the Philippines also grants it abundant natural resources and staggering biodiversity. In fact, number seven. The Philippines is one of only a handful of mega biodiverse countries in the world, owing to its fabulously extensive range of flora and fauna, including numerous endemic species, which are organisms found nowhere else on Earth. That's amazing species fact. Species include more than 170 different types of birds and 100 types of mammals. I've Before seen the monkeys in Bohol. In historic times, the archipelago's earliest inhabitants were likely the Negritos, which refers to a range of populations inhabiting various isolated areas of South and Southeast Asia. The term Negrito isn't particularly politically correct by today's standards, as it is a Spanish word that essentially just means little black person, referring to the group's relatively short stature and superficially African features of dark skin and tightly curled hair. Number nine. The Negritos were followed by successive waves of people from various other areas, such as Indonesia, all, uh, all a bunch of countries. Even the faraway Arabs eventually got around to visiting the islands that would later become the Philippines. Right. Number ten. In 1521, an explorer by the name of Ferdinand Magellan landed in Homanhon Island, Magellan. located in the eastern Visayas region of eastern Samar. Magellan was a Portuguese explorer leading a Spanish fleet, marking the beginning of the Hispanic colonization of the archipelago. Europeans arriving in a faraway land? I don't know, sounds sketchy. You know? It happens, happened all the time in history. Uh, the Europeans kind of wanted to take over everything back then. Hello. Oh, damn, it's your boy. A few years later, in 1543, the Spanish explorer Rui Lopez de Villalobos dubbed the archipelago Las Islas Filipinas. In Las Islas Filipinas. And the name stuck. Hmm. Interestingly, Philip II was the Spanish king who sent the Spanish Armada to conquer England in the name of Catholicism. Didn't work well. So, La Lalas Filipinas. For you though, did it, Phil? Number 12. The Philippines ultimately became part of the Spanish Empire for more than 300 years, resulting in Catholicism becoming the fledgling nation's dominant religion. Catholics. Which it remains to this day. However, the Philippines is officially secular, with the separation of church and state specifically outlined in the Philippine Constitution. Hmm. Number 13. Regardless, the nation's highly Big Catholic church. society Woo. makes the Philippines one of only two predominantly Christian nations in Southeast Asia. Really? Being the tiny super-Catholic nation of East Timor. I Number didn't 14. know that. During At all. this time, Manila became a trade hub that connected the West to Asia via a trans-Pacific trade route used by large trade boats called Manila Galleons, which is lots of trade. Whoa! The route connected Manila with Acapulco in the Americas, taking spices, silk, porcelain, and gold to the New World in exchange for gold. Big trading lane. Makes it very important. Against the backdrop of increasing indigenous rebellion in the form of the Philippine Revolution, Spain ceded the Philippines to the United States in 1898 as part of the settlement of the Spanish-American War. It was all kicking off, basically. It's lots of brutality <laughs> through the history. Uh, ah. Number 16. In response, Filipino nationalists established the first Philippine Republic on the 1st of January, 1899. But the United States refused to recognize it. Little over a month later, the Philippines. Shame on you, United States. Shame on you. The United States has some bad, terrible history. A lot of countries do, but. The public declared war on the United States, and the subsequent fighting became known by various names, such as the Filipino American War and the Philippine Insurrection. Hostilities ended on the 23rd of March, 1901, with the capture of Philippine President Emilio Aguinaldo, ending the First Philippine Republic. Number 17. Aside from a brief period of Japanese occupation during the Second World War, right. the United States retained sovereignty over the islands until 1946, when the Philippines was finally recognized as an independent nation. With yes. this, the Philippines became the very first country in Southeast Asia to gain independence after the Second World War. First country? That's in good. In 1965, however, a charismatic lawyer by the name of Ferdinand Marcos was elected president, winning on a now hilariously ominous slogan of This Nation Can Be Great Again. Though initially popular. I have a, like lots of questions about Marcos. I'm not going to put my thoughts because I don't really have the right to. But some Filipinos like Marcos. A lot of people, uh, Filipinos didn't. And I know he uh, 
what did he do? Declare martial law and he stayed stayed president or whatever you want to call him for like what 19 years or you know a long time i'm just curious of what all you all you filipinos that are going to watch this video think of marcos so comment down below let me know what you thought about him uh but that's just my input but public opinion began to turn against him and his infamously shoe hungry wife in Melda Marcos, owing to widespread poverty, rising inflation, rising crime, and a whole lot of corruption. Right. Number 19. And I have another another thing. I, I've uh, watched a documentary on a guy that found some gold in a cave from World War II, and Marcos pretty much took the gold from him. I've seen the picture of the guy holding the, I think it was like a golden Buddha. Was it a golden Buddha? I think so. But, um... Is all that story true? Did uh, Marcos really take all this guy's gold that he searched his entire life to find? And um, if so, what do you think about that? I think it's pretty terrible, you know, but that's just an opinion. That's just my thought. I'd really love to know your thoughts, but let's keep going on with the video. Since the Constitution befriended him from serving a third term, in 1972, Marcos declared martial law in order to remain in power. Right. A national curfew was imposed, press freedom was curtailed, International travel was banned, and an estimated 50,000 opponents of Marcos were jailed, exiled, or killed. That just sounds terrible. It doesn't sound like, to me, that's not a nice dude. That's a guy that's just power-hungry, and, you know, in my eyes, that's a bad thing. When you lose your freedoms, it's a bad thing. But I still see where people say he did a lot of good for the country, so I just really want to know your opinion. Number 20. Following rigged elections and the murder of one of his main political opponents, Damn. Benigno Aquino Jr., the rise of the non-violent People Power Revolution eventually forced Marcos to flee from the Philippines in 1986, finally ending his 21-year-long totalitarian regime. He died Marcos shortly died after. in 1989 in Honolulu, yes. Hawaii. Number 21. Despite dying in 1989, Marcos wasn't buried until 2016. What? 27 years later. Wow. Furious debates over whether Marcos deserved to be interred into the National Heroes Cemetery prevented his burial for years. And for a long period of time, his body was preserved in a glass coffin inside a refrigerated crypt in the northern province of Ilocos Norte. Holy he was smokes. buried on the 18th of November 2016. To much protest and outrage from those who understandably consider him a dictator, not a hero. Right. Do you think Marco should have been buried in the Hero Cemetery? Let us know in our temporarily... I don't know. I don't know. Number 22. No idea. Since the death of Marcos, the Philippines has seen several presidents come and go. Benigno Aquino III, who served as the 15th president of the Philippines from 2010 to 2016, is nicknamed Noi Noi. Not only that, his four sisters are also known by nicknames. <laughs> Neil, Chris, Pinky... And unfortunately, Ballsy. Woo! Number 23. Ballsy. The current president is Rodrigo Duterte. Duterte, who was elected on the promise that he would reduce crime simply by killing tens of thousands of criminals. Duterte has repeatedly claimed that he personally killed three people accused of kidnapping and rape while serving as the mayor of Davao City in Mindanao, despite earlier statements from representatives that he shouldn't be taken literally. I think I heard a story where he said that he threw a rapist out out of a helicopter? I don't know, I think I've seen that in the news or something. Don't know if that's true or not. Number 24. Sadly, the Philippines continues to struggle with political violence even in the 21st century. In fact, there have been over 1,200 political assassinations in the Philippines since 2001. Damn. Number 25. It's a lot. The flag of the Philippines is made up of two equally sized bands of royal blue and scarlet, with a white triangle on the hoist side containing several stylized stars. The flag also has a unique feature, as it is flown with the blue band at the top during peacetime and with the red band at the top when the country war. is at war. Makes sense. And now it's time for your boy Leaf. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to tag in for this one. Uh, it's going to be Milo now for number 26. The Tong Volcano on the Philippine island oh, that's so is one of the world's 17 honestly named decade volcanoes. These angry lava shooting hills are being specifically monitored based on their history of large destructive eruptions and right. proximity to highly populated areas. They're beautiful, though, just looking at it. They really are. So beautiful. Number 27. Tal is also notable for its physical geography, as it is located inside a lake on the main Philippine island. Inside a lake. In addition, the volcano's caldera contains a lake, inside of which sits a small island called Vulcan Point. This takes Vulcan Point to the world's largest island in a lake on an island in a lake. That's... That's amazing. Wow. 
When Mount Pinatubo on the Philippine island of Luzon erupted on the 15th of June 1991, the volcano ejected 10 billion metric tons of magma. It was bad, basically. However, luckily, early detection of the eruption enabled the evacuation Save the of lives. thousands of people. <laughs> Number 29. In addition, roughly 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide was ejected into the atmosphere. Oh no. Over several months, this cloud of toxic gas spread what? all over the planet and was so significant that it actually caused average global temperatures to drop by half a degree Celsius. That's impressive. Number 30. Scary. In the Philippine island province of Camiguin, there are five main towns and more than 10 volcanoes. Whoa! The largest concentration of volcanoes per square kilometer in the world. How would you like to live on an island that there's more volcanoes than towns? It's kind of scary to think about, really. I mean, in my opinion. Whew. Number 31. The Philippines typically experience five earthquakes of moderate magnitude every year. That is a so lot. Earthquakes of major magnitude every 10 years. Wow. And one large magnitude earthquake also every 10 years. It's a very wobbly country. Basically. They had a big earthquake in Bohol a few years, years ago, right? The Philippine island of Palawan is well known for its jaw-dropping natural beauty. But it's also the location of an 8.2 kilometer long underground river. I've never it's been there, the but it looks world. beautiful. At least it was until divers discovered a subterranean stream in Mexico that measures roughly 10 kilometers in length. God damn you, Mexico. Like, we can't have nice things, Mexico. I still want to go to the Philippine one before that one. The Philippine Trench, located to the east of the Mindanao Island in the Pacific Ocean, is the third deepest spot under the world's oceans after the Mariana third Trench. Third deepest. And the Tonga Trench. It stretches down around six and a half miles deep, which is as almost as deep as Sam's unerring love for Jennifer Lawrence. Sam is creepy. Please stop. <laughs> Number 34. The rice terrace of the Philippine Cordilleras. Oh, those are gorgeous. Are world Heritage Site. Those are gorgeous. Are around 2,000 years old. Though there are conflicting studies that suggest they may be considerably younger than that. Regardless, the terraces are staggeringly beautiful and are often referred to as the eighth wonder of the world. Not I mean, legit. How long does it take people to make those? Look how vast it is and uh, precise it is. Like it looked like it was each little. A uh, stair step of ground was like measured to a T, like the same distance. Um, it's just an amazing defeat, especially if they're made 2,000 years ago. It's just, it's mind blowing. Um, we would have a hard time doing it now, and it was then, you know. It's, it's just, it's just a wonder of the world, like he said. Kind of like the pyramids in Egypt are a wonder, of a wonder of a world. So is that, and I just, it just. I want to sh give so much respect for the people that made those. It's just, it's just, it's just amazing to me. Definitely need to check those out in the Philippines one day. But 35. The national symbol of the Philippines is a Philippine eagle, which is the largest eagle species by length and wing size. Declared the national bird of the Philippines in 1995. We have an eagle too. The eagle is also known as the monkey-eating eagle, due Whoa. to the largely incorrect belief that they eat monkeys. It is also critical. Hope they don't. And as such, killing one is punishable by 12 years in jail. Wow, 12 years. The Philippines has the highest rate of discovery of new animal species on the planet. Whoa. In fact, 16 new species of mammals have been discovered in the last 10 years alone. I thought the Amazon was that, but I guess the Philippines. Another check mark for the Philippines. Another reason to love the Philippines. Finding new species. There's a lot of mammals. Yes. Too many mammals. Number 37. The Philippines is home to the endemic Philippine mouse deer, the world's smallest hoofed animal. Huh. Known locally as the Pilandok, this darling little bundle of fragile sweetness stands about 40 adorable centimeters or 16 <laughs> precious little inches tall. Never seen one while I was there. Look at it, look at its little Oh! Number 38. The Philippines and its neighbor Indonesia are the only places on Earth other than the Americas where skunks can be found. There's skunks there? Earth, they're called stink badgers. As yeah, they're nasty. Indonesia, Woo! More closely related to badgers than skunks. Number 39. They do stay. Gollum a species of shark discovered off Palawan Island in the western Philippines, gets its name from Gollum, the wretched, emaciated character from the legendarium of J.R.R. Tolkien, who was corrupted by the One Ring created by the Dark Lord Sauron. Right. You know all about this because you've no doubt already watched 101 Facts About Middle Earth and the Lord. No, I haven't. Right? <laughs> right? Nope. 40. 
Apparently, the offspring of a zebra and a donkey, variously known as a zonkey, zebronkey, or zedron, <laughs> was first bred in Manila Zoo all the way back in 1960. Really? Get down with your bad As a bonkey? Number 14. What do you say, as a donkey? You have the donkeys there? I didn't, I've never even seen as a donkey or ever heard of as a donkey. So there's just so many facts in the, about the Philippines. I have no idea, but we're learning now. And uh, make sure they're correct. Let me know if they're not correct. If they're not correct, I don't want to be s steered the wrong way. So my Filipino friends that are on my channel that are watching, make sure he's telling me the truth about everything because I don't want any false information. Over 900 species of orchids grow in the Philippines. That's something you know now. It's a lot of flowers. I hope it didn't replace anything important. So beautiful. As of 2015, the Philippines has a population of at least 100 million people. It's more than that now. Their own thoughts, feelings, dreams, and aspirations. As such, the country is the 8th most populated country in Asia wow. and the 12th most populated country on Earth. Wow. Number 40. It's a lot of people. Interestingly, depending on your definition of the word, roughly 10 million additional Filipino people live overseas, forming one of the world's largest diasporas. In the United States of America, for example, Filipinos are the second largest Asian American group. Second only. And my wife's one of them. <laughs> to the Chinese. Number 44. In fact, the Philippines is the world's largest supplier of nurses. Yeah, I knew that. A quarter of all overseas nurses coming from the country. Thanks for the medical help. Philippines. That's a good. That's a good Drops. thing to be, though. Yeah, to film ourselves right that's great. The next, off the balcony and onto a It's a great step. And above ground for ever again. Promise. Number forty-five. There are roughly 170 individual languages spoken in the Philippines. Oh, I know. Including cool sounding languages like Ilocano, Cebuano, and Ware. English and Filipino, the standardized form of the Austronesian language of Tagalog, are the country's two official languages. Yeah, my wife, my wife speaks, of course, English, uh, Tagalog, Cebuano, Basaya, Chavacano. There may be more, I don't know. She speaks. She can speak a few of the dialects and languages. Forty-six. <laughs> the term Tagalog is derived from the phrase Tagailog, which means from the river. From oh, the river. Quick fact. Nice. Streamlined. Easy to edit. Right. Number 47. Nice, nice fact. There is a variant of Tagalog known as Konyo that is generally used by Konyo. youths in and around Manila. As such, the term Konyo is often used to refer to those entitled rich kids themselves. Entitled rich kids, it, say it. The word originates Speak it. The Spanish word coño, which is um coño. A very bad word for female genitalia. Oh, Ooh, oops! <laughs> you tricked me. According to the latest census, at least 52 million people in the Philippines speak English, making it the fifth largest English-speaking nation behind the U.S., India, Pakistan, and the U.K. Well, that's that's a good stat. The capital city of the Philippines is Manila. Manila. It is in the northern yes. region of Luzon. The city was founded on the 24th of June, 1571, by a Spanish conquistador called Miguel Lopez de la Casa. Manila's had a lot of history. A fairly small population of about 1,780,000 people. Was that all? Ever. According to the UN, Manila is the most densely populated city in the world. Whoa! 46,000 people per square mile. It really depends on who you ask, however, as different sources use different parameters to get different results. Basically, and I haven't, I haven't got to experience Manila too much. Just, just one layover in Manila. So, you know, when we go this time, we're going to Mindanao and Cebu. Um, but hopefully, on a trip or when we live in the Philippines, I can go experience Manila. Everything Manila has to offer. So, um, yeah. I've only experienced around the airport there so far. Basically, truth is an illusion and everything is meaningless. Number 51. Manila was named after the white flowers that grow on mangrove trees. Hmm. The Nilas, or Cithophora hydrophilacea, if you're a scientist. Yeah, I didn't, didn't know what that was called. The phrase may linad translates to there are nilad there. Number 52. The first Filipino saint came from Manila. Named Lorenzo Ruiz, he was executed Lorenzo and Luis. refusing to renounce his Christianity, despite having been brutally tortured. As such, Ruiz is also the patron saint of the Philippines. Hmm. Number 53. 
The southernmost district of the city of Manila is called Malate, which is Malate. the of the Tagalog word Malate, meaning salty, which was in salty. my nickname at school. <laughs> don't ask. No, You're a little salty? You don't. Just forget about it, alright? Where's the Jolly Bees? When viewed from above, Manila's city hall looks like a coffin. It was designed to look like a shield of the Knights Templar emblazoned with a cross. Huh. To the protection of the country under the Roman Catholic Church. But no, no, that's a coffin. That just looks exactly like a coffin. It What's does it? look like a coffin. Number 55. <laughs> Being in such close proximity to China has obviously had a profound effect on the Philippines. Unsurprisingly, Manila's Chinatown dates back to the 16th century. I want to check the Chinatown the out. Town in the world, not including actual Chinese towns. 56. The what? Chinatown looks looks pretty cool to visit. How's the Chinatown? Let me know a little bit about the chi Chinatown if you've been to the Chinatown in the Philippines. I want to know if it's worth uh, visiting or not. Promoting the film Broke Down Palace in 1998, American huh. actress Claire Danes described Manila, in which the production filmed for several months, as a ghastly and weird city. Whoa! Manila smelled of cockroaches with rats all over, and that there is no sewage system, and the people do not have anything. No arms, no legs, no eyes. What? In response, Manila's city council voted to declare Dane's persona non grata, and banned all of her movies from being shown in this Yes! Movie. Number 57. Yes, you should ban her! Ban her, because you know what she is? A bitch! She should not be, ever be allowed in the Philippines ever again. You don't, I mean, you gotta, res, when you visit somewhere, you gotta respect it. Even, even if it ain't to your standards, you gotta respect it. Because I guarantee where she's from, there's a hell of a lot of things wrong. You know, you can't just nitpick this and that. And with an attitude like that, I wouldn't want that, that lady in, in the country. Just go away, never come back. We don't need you. Um, you don't disrespect the people that live at places like that. It's just ridiculous. Um, that kind of that, that didn't kind of piss me off. It did piss me off. But let's just keep continuing on. Tomas Claudio Street in Manila was named after the first Filipino victim of the First World War. Oh, Claudio moved wow. to the United States as a young man in search of a better life before deciding to enlist in the U.S. Army in 1917. Right. The following year, he died a month after being wounded whilst fighting in Europe. Wow. The Philippine government later decided to name one of the streets of Manila in his honor. No, that's, that's a good but, honor. But enough about the apparently ghastly and weird city of Manila. The country's most populous city is Quezon City. Quezon. With a population of 2,761,720 people, over a million more than Manila. Quezon City actually was the nation's capital between 1948 and 1976. I didn't know that. Moved to Manila. Huh. Number 59. Marikina City in Luzon is often called the shoe capital of the Philippines, owing to its large shoe industry. The area doubled its location in 2002 with the construction of the world's largest pair of shoes. The beefy brogues measure at over five meters long, almost two and a half meters wide, hey. and two meters high. Number 60. Really makes sense, but you do what you like, Chris. That's Canada a big City, shoe. Located on the Philippine island of Jacob, I can't say it. Ah, Negros is home Negros. to the wonder tree of Canlaon. Whoa! A tree that is estimated to be around 1,330 years Are old. you kidding me? Number That's 61. a massive tree. I need to see Often it. Often considered the unofficial national dish of the Philippines. Adobo is a dark stew of chicken and or pork. Adobo, not adobo. Garlic, bay leaf, and black peppercorn. The flavor is so popular that you can buy adobo flavored varieties of Filipino snack foods such as nuts, chips, noodles, and corn crackers. Number 60. Is he trying to say adobo or ababadu? I, I don't I don't know. Maybe there is an ababadu, but is he say, trying to say adob, adobo? I don't know. Two. One of the most interesting Philippine dishes is balut, and by interesting, I mean deeply unappetizing and frankly unsettling. Very what? Balut is a boiled fertilized duck egg with a half developed bird embryo inside. It is said to be an aphrodisiac, which is incorrect. Number six. Well, I'm going to be honest. I haven't ate a balut yet. I've been to the Philippines several times, have not done it yet. Um, I want to I wanna eat balut this time around when we go in June. In about 75 days. Yeah, I'm counting them because. Um, it's going to be a good time. I may try to eat balut. I don't know. 
I need encouragement. So definitely subscribe to the channel and encourage me to eat some balut. Um, my wife, I've watched my wife and her family eat plenty of balut. Um, you crack the top, drink the juice, add some, uh, was it, vinegar on it, eat it. Um, my wife don't eat the bird part, she eats around the bird part and drinks the juice. But, I mean, to Ameri most Americans, like me, probably it doesn't look appetizing. But just because something doesn't look appetizing, doesn't mean it's not appetizing. So I definitely want to try it out. I just need to be encouraged a little bit. And I actually have a friend coming with us, me and my family. One of my uh, friend, childhood friends, so we need to talk him into eating it too. He said he'll never eat it, but I think we can encourage him enough to eat some balut. And I, I, I bet it would make a great video, so definitely follow along, uh, support the channel, and be there. Anyway, let's keep, keep going. The three other unique Filipino dishes include camaro, which are field crickets fried in soy sauce, vinegar, and sugar. A paten, a stew made from goat or cow innards, flavored with the animal's own bile. I haven't had any of that. Number five, a soup made out of the testicles and penis of a bull, which again is considered an aphrodisiac for some strange un- I haven't had that neither. Nintendo 64. Owing to the shortage of tomatoes during the Second World War, the Philippines has a ketchup alternative made with, prepare yourself, banana. Yeah, we- yes. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. We buy that here. Naturally red, so it is dyed to match ketchup traditional crimson. I like it, it's sweet. At number 65, it has been estimated that Filipinos send about 400 million text messages every day. That's a lot of text. 142 billion texts per year. That's more than the total number of daily text messages sent in the US and Europe combined. Wow. As such, the Philippines is now known as the text messaging capital of the world. It's a lot of text. In 2014, Time Magazine ranked Makati, a city in the Manila metropolitan area, as the selfie capital of the world. <laughs> yes, it is apparently Filipinos that struggle the most with the trappings of modern vanity. It is folly, I say. Folly! Number 67. Well, it's easy when you have a country that's so beautiful, you know, you want to stand in front of a waterfall and, or a, a, a pretty beach and go, you know? You got great sights in the Philippines, so of course the Philippines is going to have a lot of selfies, you know? I mean, look at the beauty, the beauty the Philippines hold. Not only the, the landscape, but the people and the way they treat people is beautiful as well. In rural parts of the Philippines, most women give birth at home. A local cluster I thought they outlawed the that. Baby's placenta beneath the house, often along with an object that symbolizes what the parents hope the child will grow up to be. In urban areas, however, this practice is prohibited by the health authorities. Yeah, that's what I thought. Actually burying bio waste underneath your house. Number 68. Mature members of the Bogobo, the largest indigenous group in the country, Bogobo? are known to practice tooth sharpening. Ooh. The file is used to grind their pearly whites to a point. Ooh. The group also blacken their teeth using burnt plant matter, as black pointy teeth are a sign of beauty. Obviously. Is it? Number I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Not to people who are willing to waste perfectly good military hardware, the people of the Philippines repurposed thousands of army jeeps that the U.S. military left behind after the Second World War and turned them into public transportation vehicles called jeepneys. Jeepneys. Modern versions of the jeepney can accommodate up to 18 people and are often creatively adorned in vivid and colorful kitsch designs. They're, they're kind of cool. I've never rode on one yet. Costume characters, religious sayings, and even flashing neon lights. There are roughly 50,000 jeepneys operating in Manila alone. I rode on trikes and buses and airplanes in the Philippines from island to island, boats, but I've never rode on a jeepney. I've rode in vans where it's supposed to hold 12 people and there's probably 20 people stuffed in there and I got people on my lap that I don't even know squished up and sit on top of me. That's the Philippines. That's the beauty of the Philippines. That's something you don't see here and it's something new and exciting to experience in the Philippines. That's why I love the Philippines. Um, because I'm not accustomed to hardly anything that goes on around there, and there's always something new. It, it just brings, going to the Philippines, experience in the Philippines brings a lot more meaning to life, you know. Especially as a foreigner, I, I would think. And, um, it's just an amazing place, and there's so much to discover. I just, I just love it. Let's just keep going on. 
compensated for the video. In fact, Filipinos are so proud of their jeepneys that they even sent one to be exhibited at the Philippine Pavilion at the 1964 New York World's Fair. Heck yeah! It is a national image of the Filipino people. It is. Number 71. Filipinos are known to observe an extremely long Christmas season. Yeah, with the playing of like September to September, February or something. For most people on the 6th of January. Oh, January. The Three Kings, around four months in total. This makes it the longest Christmas season in the world. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I love Christmas. As part of the festivities, Filipinos often celebrate Simbang Gabi, or Night Mass, where devoted Catholics attend nine dawn services in a row leading up to Christmas Eve. That's a lot of Before services. Attends all nine Masses, it is said their wish will be granted. But with services beginning as early as 4am, the holiday conflicts with my personal belief to not wake up that early. I get up that early anyway. It's what Jesus would have wanted. <laughs> Number 73. Another notable Philippine holiday is the Day of Valor, which honors those who fought during the Battle of Bataan in the right. Second World War. After the battle, approximately 75,000 Filipino and American troops were forced by the Japanese to march over 100 kilometers to prisoner camps. Right. Thousands died of exhaustion. You gotta, you gotta show your respects. Number show your respects. There is a figure in Filipino folklore known as the... Really? You want me to say that? Oh, Ask Wong? Yeah. A mythical, shape-shifting, evil spirit Ooh. that combines traits of vampires, witches, and ghouls. Whoa. The Aswang is said to eat fetuses and small children. Who? Bring their hearts and livers. I don't want to meet that. Organs of the young you can keep that. Uh-uh. Basketball is the most popular sport in the Philippines. Philippines Basketball Association is the first and oldest league in Asia and the second wow. oldest in the world after the National Basketball Association in the United States. That's impressive. And I played basketball in the Philippines against the locals. Um, we went to a barangay, I guess you would call it, and there was a court in the middle of one of the neighborhoods and uh, yeah, I didn't do so well. We played at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It was so hot. like. Like, it looked like I jumped in the ocean, you know what I'm saying? Because my, my clothes were so wet. Um, the Filipino kids in the neighborhood, they were fat, a lot faster than me. Yeah, they whooped up on me. I actually have video somewhere on one of my phones from it. And I jammed my finger. Um, I just felt like somebody beat me up once I was done playing the game of basketball with the neighborhood kids in the barangay. But um, I wouldn't change the experience. It was fun. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's just a good time. 76. Though cockfighting has long been abolished in many nations, it is still it's there. popular in the Philippines. Yeah, I've seen it. In fact, the country is home to a huge cockfighting competition known as the World Slasher Cup, staged in Manila's... Adonis Slasher Cup. Cup, yes. That is... Whoa. That's not good. That's not good. Number 77. Spider fighting in the Philippines is extremely popular with young people. Spider fighting? Multiple spiders in Matchbox stables. Apparently what? the Filipino youth are too good for Pokemon Go. Snobs, a lot of them. I didn't know that. 78. Filipinos love a good shopping mall or shopping center. Big! They call them here in Georgia. Big! In fact, the Philippines is home to three of the ten largest shopping malls in the world. Number 79. I've been to the one in Cebu the City. Ayala, Ayala. Tropical fruits such as papaya and mangosteen. Mangosteen, which I now understand is not named after nor in any way related to Bruce Springsteen, has been cultivated in Southeast Asia for thousands of years. Wow. Number 80. Very real first names the very real Filipino parents chose for their very real Filipino children include Bing, Bong, Bambi, Joker, Honey Boy, Girly, Peanuts, and... Bumble. You can find that in most countries. not gendered either. You genuinely may bump into middle-aged men called Babe. Number 81. Yo, yo, was invented by a Filipino-American by the name of Pedro Flores. That's pretty cool. And the word yo-yo comes from yo-yo. A lot of us have played with a yo-yo. Ilocano, the third most widely spoken native language in the Philippines. Number 82. The antibiotic erythromycin, an important antibiotic widely used to treat chest infection, wow. was discovered by a Filipino physician named Abelardo Aguilar Thank you. in 1949. Thank you. Erythromycin is especially useful for people who are allergic to penicillin and has saved millions of lives. Good. Wow. That's an Number achievement. The University of Santo Tomas in Manila was founded by Dominican monks in 1611. 
that makes it older than America's Harvard University, which Whoa. was not founded until 1630. That's an old university. That's pretty neat. In terms of student population, the University of Santo Tomas is also the world's largest Catholic university in a single campus. Muzzle tov. Am I using that right? Number eight. Probably not, dude. During his visit to the Philippines in 2015, the conclusion I was there by Pope Francis 2015. in Manila's Luneta Park on the 18th of January was attended by an estimated 6 million Filipinos. Holy smokes. This became the largest ever papal gathering in history. Wow. Passing a record set by Pope John Paul II during World Youth Day in 1995, which was also held in Luneta Park. That is massive. Number 86. Contestants from the Philippines have won numerous major international beauty pageant titles. Three for Miss Universe. Whoa! Miss International. Whoa! Whoa! We've added since then. You can't forget Carolina Gray. Four. And I think we've added to the the this this contest too. They're getting ready to talk about what were they going to call it? international something something. They've added the Filipino people have added. Carolina Gray is an amazing lady. Um, I have some actually some reactions on her several in some of her interviews so definitely check them out but highly support what she's about helping the children awesome so that stat's wrong there's four not not three one for miss world and five for miss earth titles making it the second most successful nation behind the apparent stunners from venezuela number 87 in 1992, Pepsi decided to combat low sales with a promotion they dubbed Number Fever, in which numbers printed on the inside of bottle caps corresponded to cash rewards. Really? the campaign's conclusion, the company announced that the grand prize of 1 million pesos would be awarded to whoever found a cap emblazoned with the number 349 of which only one would be released. Wow. However, due to a third-party manufacturing error, oh. instead of producing a single 349 cap, Pepsi ended up with over 800,000 of them. What? Number 88. Initially, Pepsi denied responsibility for the mistake and refused to pay up, which unsurprisingly sparked widespread outrage in the form of lawsuits, property damage, and even riots. Shame on you, Pepsi. It was so severe that several people lost their lives. Oh, no. Pepsi ultimately spent over 200 million Philippine pesos in settlements, not to mention the cost of the damage to their reputation. Wow. Number 89. A less upsetting cola-based Philippine fact regards Jazz Cola, a brand of soft drink produced by Pepsi rivals Coca-Cola exclusively for the Philippine market. The drink is available only in the Philippines and is in fact specifically targeted at consumers in the Visayas region in the middle of the country. Why just Some there? sources have reported that Jazz Cola fuels Visayan pride among its team consumers. <coughs> Number 90. In 1977, the entirety of Calawit Island in the western Philippines was declared to be a wildlife sanctuary and game reserve by the Marcos administration to save endangered animals. That's in Kenya, pretty. Africa. Zebras, giraffes, African and endemic deer, wildlife such as zebras, giraffes, gazelles, sea turtles, and Palawan peacock pheasants. Number nineteen. Love the animals. In 2011, a group of Filipino dwarves led by Alejandro Deron Jr. announced their plan to establish the country's first colony for little people in order to escape daily harassment and discrimination. At the time, Deron was a 35-year-old bartender working at The Hobbit House, the country's only the, restaurant run entirely by little people. The Hobbit House. Number 92. Back when the area now... Don't known, shame on people. ...Spanish colonial rule, it was also known as Nuevas Filipinas, or Nuevo Reino de Filipinas, respectively translating to New Philippines and New Kingdom of the Philippines. Eventually, the name was dropped in favor of just Texas, because everything is bigger in Texas. This Texas... <laughs> Number 93. On the 5th of December 1965, a 1 megaton nuclear bomb fell into the Philippine Sea. Oh no. Japan, when the attack jet to which it was attached oh. accidentally fell off the carrier, the pilots, aircraft, and the nuclear bomb were never recovered. And it wasn't until 1989 that the Pentagon revealed that this had even happened. Number 94. Oh, that's terrible. It's a popular souvenir that tourists can purchase in the Philippines known as a barrel man, which consists of a small statuette of a man stood inside a round wooden barrel man. man. When the barrel is removed, the male figure inside Whoa! is removed, revealing a side splittingly hilarious <laughs> erection. Whoa! How we laugh. <laughs> how we laugh. I think I'll pass on the barrel man. 
The Cagayan battles of 1582, which occurred in northern Luzon, are the only recorded battles known to have involved European infantry fighting against samurai warriors. Whoa! Number 96. Genghis Khan warriors? Every nation in the world except the Philippines and the strange, tiny Catholic city-state of Vatican City allow for some form of divorce. Though Muslims in the Philippines do have the right to divorce in accordance with their religion, the only option available to most Filipinos who can't bear the sight of that form annulment? of annulment is annulment. Yeah. As such, the Philippines is the only UN nation in which divorce is generally illegal. Yeah, I heard about that. The Philippines accounts for roughly 43% of the planet's gin consumption. That's gin incredible. That's a lot of gin, my friends. <laughs> Number 98. Somebody's gotta lead it. In 1844, the Philippines moved from one side of the international date line to the other, which had the curious effect of completely eliminating the 31st of December, 1844, from the history of the Philippines. Gone! Number 99. According to a study carried out in 2013, 85% of people in the Philippines have a favorable view of the United States. Hilariously, the study found that 84% of Americans have a favorable view of their own country, making the Philippines the most pro-American country in the world, more so than America itself. Thank you, Philippines. On the 4th of May 2006, 3,738 women in Manila set the world record for the most women simultaneously breastfeeding. <laughs> Muzzle tough. What a record! It's a lot of breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is healthy, though. In August of 2016, it was discovered that the Filipino fishermen had found the world's largest natural pearl. Yeah, I heard about that. Under his bed for 10 years, wow. unaware of its worth. Now wow. known as the Pearl of Puerto, the pearl weighs in at a staggering 34 kilograms. That's huge. So that was 101 facts about the Philippines. Did you like it? Did you I like loved it. it? I want more. So while you're down there, let us know what you want to see next, because how are we supposed to know? We're not cat some kind of... All right, I want more. I want more facts about the Philippines. So if you're Filipino and there was a fact that, you, that he didn't say, didn't teach us, let me know on that fact. I want to know about that pearl. I heard um, he gave it to like the barangay or the officials of the town or city or wherever it was. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if I would have done that or not, you know. Um, when wealth comes your way in life, you got to seize the opportunity, I think. So he could have maybe sold it, you know, and provided a lot of stuff for his family and friends. I don't know. I don't know. That's just me, though. I don't think that's being greedy, but there are so many facts that he went over, and it just it just tells you how amazing the Philippines is. It's just such a beautiful place, such deep, rich history. A lot of a lot of good things have came out of the Philippines, you know, and um, it's just a place you probably could go over there and explore for a lifetime and still not see everything. And there's just so many different kinds of people you could go over there and meet, and um. It's just, just mind-blowing what comes out of the Philippines. And I'm proud that, you know, I have a little bit of Filipino in my life. You know, my wife's Filipina. My baby's half Filipino. Um, yeah, it's a big part of my life, and I thoroughly enjoyed this video. Hopefully you liked my thoughts and my reactions, because they, they are sincere. And like I said, we'll be over there in June, so definitely... Um, if you're into vlog stuff, and I react to a lot of Filipino stuff, I even put clips of me and my family on this channel. Um, I'm, I'm going to start another channel. I've already started it called uh, Kuya Rodney. So I'm going to get that going too. But definitely, if you want to be part of the Max Reaction family, please hit the subscribe button. Join the Max Reaction family. And definitely share this video. It helps the video being found. Share it to your social medias. Hopefully, we can gain some more subscribers and followers. But um, I really do appreciate the Philippines. That's why I keep going back um, and hopefully live there one day. But anyway, your thoughts, your feelings, your reactions, any of that, comment down below. Let me know what those thoughts are. I love hearing from all my, my friends and family that's on YouTube. And... Um, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Spread that peace, spread that love, spread that happiness. Later.
Big up.